Uh, the talk uh, is about a, a generalization of a common functor. This is a joint work with Christoph Bohoy, Florian Hosej, Stefano Mora, and Bernard Michelin. Uh, so first, I start with the introduction to the um, multi-local Lorentz program. Um, so I fix prime number p, and for n uh, and positive integer, and k a finite extension of a QP. So the multi uh, Lorentz program want to uh, study the relation between, on the one hand, or on the one side the mod p uh, representations of the Galois group uh, of k. And on the other side, the uh, admissible smooth uh, mod p representations of a GLN k. Uh, here we assume uh, the center of this group GLN acts uh, uh, by a corrector. So we call this center corrector. So in this talk, we will only focus on the case n equals two and the case unramified extension. So we will replace fp bar by finite extension of uh, f of fp. So we assume it's very large. So it's um, humbly to make such a assumption. So I first recall the case delta qp. So, so far, we know really very little about the uh, multi uh, Lorentz correspondence. The only um, completely understood case is the case delta qp. So let me first review it. Um, for, the, for the Galois representation, two-dimensional, it's very easy to classify. So you first have a reducible case. So rho bar can be written as an um, extension of two characters, split or not. And uh, if rho bar is reducible, you can show that up to twist by a character, it is uh, an induction from uh, TQP uh, QP square. So here, QP square is a degree two unramified extension of QP uh, from a character omega two to the power r. So here, omega two is a uh, uh, Sears uh, fundamental character of level two, and r um, is between zero and p minus one. So up to twist, uh, you see there are exactly p um, irreducible representations of GQP. Two dimensional. So on the side of a JLQP, this is also uh, studied, uh, uh, completely understood. So, first of all, Bartel and Livne, they classified all the principal series and also its uh, sub quotients. Um, so, they defined uh, uh, the other reducible representations uh, to be uh, super singular. In classical notion, such representations are called a super cuspidal. Um, and then, then in 2001, Bohoi um, has classified all the uh, super singular ones, but only for the case JFQP. So the, the results of a body Livni works for any um, local field, for I mean uh, finite extension of QP or functional field. They work in general, but theorem of Bohoi only works for QP. So any super singular representation is isomorphic to, so again, up to twist uh, by a character, um, it's isomorphic to a compact induction. So here, C induced uh, means a compact induction from uh, um, the GL to ZP times QP cross of such, um, this is, uh, so sim, sim R is a standard representation of GL to ZP of dimension R plus one. And you, you should modify some heck operator. Um, so the, the, the whole combined induction is not uh, irreducible, but when you modify T, it becomes irreducible and it's a super singular. So when R runs over zero uh, to uh, P minus one, they, um, they, they, they give all these super singular representations. So you see numerically, at least you get uh, some bijection between um, super singular mutations of JLQP with uh, two dimensional irreducible mutation of the Galois group. So, this suggests that you have some correspondence between them. So, Bohai defined it as a so called semi simple multi local Lorentz correspondence. So, for a bar, you attach 
uh, 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 jet qb implementation pi nova. So when nova is reducible, it's clear that you should match with some super singular, but a little bit more careful, there is some uh, shift of the degree, but it doesn't matter. It's not uh, so important. Um, for the, <coughs> sorry, reducible case. However, it's not so clear which principle, you should make, put some principle series here. It's not, I mean, clear which principles you should put. Because in the classical uh, local lines correspondence, even for reducible color with the linear orientation, they also uh, correspond to some irreducible uh, representation of the so here we, we have some uh, reducible ones. Uh, also, I should point out that uh, unlike the um, characteristic zero representations, um, this there's no intervening operator between these two principal series. Yeah, they are not isomorphic. I should point out that. So when you have a direct sum of two characters, you send this one to uh, correspond to uh, uh, the semi simplification uh, of these two principal series, because sometimes it can be reducible for, for, for each uh, principal series in some special case. Um, the Coleman's found a uh, functorial explanation for this correspondence and extend this correspondence to the non semi symbol case, but he uses five gamma modules. Actually, he constructed a factor from the representation of the zero to QP to the Galois group, the representation of Galois group. In fact, he constructed a functor from the zero to QP representation to Fontaine's five modules, which is equivalent to a Galois representation by Fontaine. So I will recall this uh, uh, construction in the second part of the talk. So now uh, let me review some main properties of this functor, and you will see that this functor plays a very um, important role in the, in the whole periodic lens program for the QP. So it's, uh, so, the, so they said that it's uh, important to generalize it. So some knowing properties that uh, uh, comments first prove that this is uh, in fact uh, exact functor. And similarly, um, this functor recovers for a semi simple multi local lines correspondence. Meaning that if pi over bar is a gl 2 qp representation corresponding to low bar, then you apply this functor, you get back low bar. So this allows to extend the correspondence to non semi simple case. So why this? Because you can construct, I mean, um, it, it, say, low bar is of the form a non-simple extension of two characters, then you, you can put pi over bar to be some non-simple extension between the two principal series. And because of is a functor, then you, you, you check, you prove, uh, it, uh, gives, it can give um, uh, correspondence between the extension group um, on the one side are two characters, on the other side, extension group of the two principal series. So roughly uh, this is that for the mod p case. Now um, this functor also realizes the piatic lines correspondence for the group. So Commons also constructed another a, a functor in the other direction. So uh, I mean uh, studying uh, you, you have a starting from Galois representation low Piatic one, you can construct a Banach space representation, pi. Um, there is a theorem of a Coleman's, Dosfinescu, and Pascunas says that uh, if you apply a Coleman factor to this uh, big pyro, you get back the, the Galois representation rule. So here, if you have a Banach space representation, uh, an admissible by the unitary, so I, 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 I sketch this very quickly because I will not use that in, in, the, in, the, in the rest of the talk. Uh, you have a unit ball because it's a binary representation, pi zero. So you can intend Coleman's functor um, to, uh, to uh, correct to, uh, to zero representation in that way. You 
you multiply Pn and you can apply the functor V, then you take the inverse limit. And finally, you invert P to get a bit of a big pi. Of course, when you do so, uh, the exactness of a V plays an important role, which allows you to, to do so. Um, all this tells you that, uh, I mean, the common font is very important if you uh, want to generalize the periodic long lines uh, to uh, higher rank groups. Um, so let me pass to the second part. First, uh, I will review the construction of a Coleman's functor. Um, so I recall the definition of a Fagelman module due to Fontaine. So a Fagelman module uh, in the mod P setting uh, over F, uh, uh, FT, the Laurent series uh, uh, field, um, is a finite free FT module M with the semi linear commuting actions of a phi and a gamma. So here, on the coefficient field, phi sends t to t to the power p, and gamma sends t to the, um, uh, you can imagine that it sends one plus t to uh, one plus t uh, power gamma. So here gamma uh, is in the group, uh, gamma isomorphic to, uh, which is isomorphic to zp cross uh, by, by uh, the secretomic character. And the uh, Feigenman module is called etal if uh, uh, the image of phi um, generates m uh, on a, uh, when you linearize, linearize this morphism. So, I mean, equivalently, if you have such an isomorphism. So, this is a definition of a Feigenman module. And now uh, let's uh, uh, look at how it commands constructed his uh, functor. So the, the key observation of Coleman's is that inside the JQP, there is a monoid uh, P plus defined in this way. So here, this is uh, in, the, in, the, in this corner, you have a ZP minus zero. And this is just a monoid. And uh, he observed that action of P plus can be translated to a structure of a Fagan modules, because you can, if you if you look at uh, the unipotent part one dp zero one, the the completed uh, uh, I mean uh, group algebra also called the Ibasawa algebra of this group uh, is isomorphic to f uh, double bracket t. Uh, you send the element one one zero one to t plus one. Um, then the matrix. P001 corresponding to uh, the upgrade uh, phi. The um, ZP cross 001 is isomorphic to gamma. So you see the two matrix um, commute, obviously. This corresponding to the uh, condition in the definition of a Faga module that uh, phi and gamma commute. Uh, you, you can also check uh, this to. Uh, maps on the coefficients by doing the I mean, multiplication of uh, matrix to get this. So this is a key observation. Um, but you see from the construction, this is uh, very special to the uh, QP case and also to the uh, GL2 case because uh, the gamma in the in Fontaine's uh, Fagan module is just isomorphic ZB cross. So, so it's very special to tier 2 QP. Um, that's why it makes uh, generalization quite difficult to do so. Um, there have been uh, several generalization. So the first one is due to Schneider and the Vinyahas. So I just copied the title here, but you can see uh, um, it's a uh, uh, effect uh, they, they are attached to a uh, smooth uh, um, I mean, torsion representation to uh, uh, multivariable uh, Fagama modules, I mean, a generalization of a Fagama modules. Um, because, uh, for example, when you uh, replace uh, GL2 by GLN, you, 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 have, you need to uh, a big gamma, you need uh, more variables. Um, and the uh, variety also uh, continues their study um, on this uh, multivariable Fagama modules. 
And uh, later on, Bo Hei also had a uh, generalization. Um, uh, I will recall his construction uh, very soon. And this will be the main uh, object of my talk. Um, a gross clone also generalized this, but uh, he, uh, he starts from a proper Ivahori head module and uh, to get some saga modules. Uh, it's not, not exactly from the uh, reductive group, but uh, just uh, start from a uh, uh, head module. But anyway, um, all the difficult is that they cannot treat super singular pi because there's no classification except the case of JQD. So if we have very, very little understanding uh, for such a super singular. So they cannot, you can formally generalize the common factor, but they cannot compute what you get for super singular pi. So this is, uh, I think, uh, one of the main difficulties. So let's continue. Uh, I will talk about Bohoyer's uh, generalization. So I will only focus on the case JL2. And K is an uh, unramified extension. So we consider the trace map from the integers of uh, K, OK to ZP. And uh, I let the N0 to be the, uh, the group, the unicorn group, 1, OK, 0, 1. And N1 to be the subgroup when um, the kernel, you replace OK by the kernel of trace. Um, and you, of course, you have N0 mod V1, uh, mod N1 is isomorphic ZP. And now you take a pi, is a uh, admissible smooth uh, mod P representation of GL2K, and you assume uh, to have a central character. We consider the subspace of a pi, which are invariant under the action of N1. Which are fixed by, by, by N1. So naturally, it carries an action of the uh, matrix 1 VP01 because N0 mod N1 is isomorphic to a VP. And also, you have an action of VP minus 0. The action is like this you, you have, uh, I mean, uh, um, essentially, uh, this definition is non trivial only when. Um, this x uh, is like a p uh, or, or p to the power n. You get something, a finite sum. Um, here is a finite sum for n1 goes over this, uh, this coset. Uh, this, uh, this coset. Again, you can easily check that uh, this is the action uh, on uh, pi n1. So here the factor you use that the trace map is a p linear. So somehow, uh, um, you can see that you get something uh, similar to a uh, common situation. Then we call a subspace uh, V of uh, pi n1 admissible if uh, V is stable on the action of zp minus zero. And also, we require that uh, the invariant subspace of V under this uh, unipotent group is finite dimensional. So this finiteness uh, is very crucial because this corresponds that when you take the Pontryag dual or the linear dual in this case, V dual, this becomes a finitely generated module over F double, double bracket T. Over this, uh, I mean, this is the uh, Ivasava algebra corresponding to this uh, group. Um, so you, you put, you consider, I mean, you consider this dual, you put the uh, contrograded action of uh, ZP uh, minus zero, you actually get a Psi gamma module over this ring. But uh, let me recall it better what is uh, Psi here. So you, you have phi, and then Psi is roughly a left inverse of, uh, of the upright phi. So you can similarly define what is a uh, Psi gamma module. You require uh, in the semi-linear uh, condition you, you replace that uh, by this one. So you get a psi gamma module. The action of a psi and the gamma also compute. Um, so let me explain um, why you should consider the dual of v 
uh, rather than v itself. This is because you start with a uh, smooth presentation. So on v, the action, I mean, because the action is smooth. So if you view v itself as a module over this uh, f uh, double bracket t, in fact, it's always a total module. You, you can, because finally, to get a FAGA module, you will um, invert T. So if you work directly with V, you always get there because everything's torsion. That's why you need to take the contrarian duo to get something, um, I mean, something compound module, but uh, usually um, torsion free module. You get something uh, torsion free. Um, but uh, um, the, but but uh, you you lose the phi action, you only get a psi action because uh, you, you take the quicker graded action, okay? But you have the following lemma. If V is admissible in this sense, the um, V uh, duo and the you invert T, then this carries a structure of eta by gamma mode. In fact, you prove that uh, uh, this, uh, this guy, uh, it's an etal uh, Pasa gamma module. And uh, then the general fact that uh, an etal Pasa gamma module uh, is naturally uh, an etal Pasa gamma module. So anyway, they are equivalent. Um, so, okay. Now we pass to uh, the definition of Bourreuil. Um, so inside the pi, uh, he take all the admissible subspace of a pi n1. And for each V admissible, you, uh, you first take the dual and the invert T, then you take the inverse limit for all admissible V. Uh, because you, ha you have, you have uh, take the dual, so here you, you need to take the inverse limit. Um, for each admissible V, you get uh, at, uh, at alpha gamma module, but now uh, you have taken the inverse limit. So this is uh, the so-called uh, pro at alpha gamma modules. So a priori, um, given pi, it could be you get fine. You you could get something in finite dimension. A priori, because uh, you have no uh, control about the v. Um, in common situation, he can really prove that um, the dimension is uh, finite, because they can prove that inside all the admissible v, there is uh, how to say there is. Uh, um, there's a final object. Okay. So Buhai uh, can prove the following. Uh, he computed uh, uh, D of pi if pi is not super singular. That is, if pi is a principal series or a sub quotient of a principal series, he can compute that uh, explicitly. Um, and I also prove that D is a left exact functor. And if you just restrict it to the uh, non-super singular orientations, it's even uh, exact. But for super singular ones, it cannot say it can, it can say nothing, I think. Um, so we don't know in general um, if the set admissible V is empty. So that means that you could get some, you could get the pi equals zero. Um, and we don't know if d pi is finite dimensional. I also already uh, mentioned this. We don't know whether d is exact. So we don't know that. The main result now is that um, a theorem of Boy, uh, Hersig, myself, Mora, and Shen uh, in this year. So on some suitable category C, which I will define below, d is an exact functor and d of pi is finite dimensional over the uh, over this field. That means you really get some finite dimensional color orientation and an exact function. But we, I need to tell you on which category C. So now let's define the category C. Um, so I need to first introduce uh, uh, this uh, subgroup, uh, which is called Propi Ivahori subgroup, defined in this way. Um, I let Z1 to be the subject of I1. Let lambda to be the complete group algebra, the Ivasava algebra of this uh, group. 
uh, and I let M denote the maximal idea uh, ideal of this uh, of this ring. This is a local ring because I want the property uh, group. Then is a, a classical result of the Lazar set. Lambda is a Lazar ring, and he, Lazar already studied the structure of such uh, Ivasava algebra, and um, uh, now uh, recently called Claudel. Uh, he um, makes the structure uh, in this, um, I mean, makes the structure exactly in the GL2 case uh, very explicitly. So we get that. If you look at the graded algebra, so the maximum ideal M will define a filtration on, on the ring. You can look at uh, the graded algebra. Um, this is isomorphic to um, the following ring. But here it is again non commutative. You see, because I was non commutative, uh, it's not abelian, so lambda is non commutative. Now, when you pass through graded, graded run, it is again uh, non commutative. It is isomorphic to, in fact, isomorphic to the universal enveloping algebra of some uh, Lie algebra. Uh, so here, explicitly, um, um, the isomorphic or tensor product for the index from i equals zero to f minus one um, generated by ei fi hi uh, with the following relations. So um, ei and fi uh, here, this is a Lie bracket uh, equals hi. And ei hi, they commute. And also fi hi commute. Uh, for variables with different index, they all commute. So essentially, the only uh, non commutative relation is here EIFI equals to HI. In particular, you see that all the HI lies in the subject of this ring. Uh, they are the subject. And when you modify HI, uh, you get actually a commutative ring because then EIFI will uh, commute to each other. Okay, um, now I define a two-sided idea of this uh, gradient ring. Uh, I let J to be uh, the ideal generated by ERFI and FREI. Um, so in particular, HI uh, belong to this idea. So note that if you modify J, you really get some commutative ring um, and its screw dimension is equal to F. The definition of the category C is that you take uh, all the uh, admissible smooth representation pi, multi representation pi, such that uh, um, the graded uh, module, you take first the dual, then it will become, because pi is admissible, this is a finite generated module over lambda, then you can pass to graded module. This is again a finite generated module over, over the gradient ring. So I we require that this gradient module is queued by some power of j. Some finite power of j. So the first remark is that this is an abelian category and stable on the equations. The reason is that when, when you define um, this property, uh, in fact, on pi due, you, you, you have other filtrations, um, something equivalent to the M article. When you change to other good filtrations, essentially this uh, uh, condition does not change. Uh, it does not depend on which uh, filtration you, you take. So um, using a lemma, uh, I think this lemma, you can prove that this is a abelian category and, and uh, that uh, step on the extensions. Yeah. Um, the second remark is that for any admissible pi, you have a notion of a, a gap on the key law of dimension. So this is the invariant uh, for any such uh, admissible magnetic pi. Uh, it measures the growth of the dimension of an invariant subspace under the group Hn. So here Hn is, uh, is uh, uh, the I1 to the power Pn. So you, you make n goes to infinity and this dimension function will grow um, because the group 
becomes uh, smaller, smaller. So the dimension grows. And this Gaffold kilo dimension measures the growth of, uh, of the dimension. This is always finite, uh, bounded by the dimension of this uh, I1 effect. Um, I remind that if pi uh, lies in this category C, then its GK dimension is uh, bounded by F. So the reason is very, very simple because uh, when you compute the gain from the kilo dimension, in fact, it can pass to the gradient module. And when you pass to the gradient module, um, say in the case, in the simply case, uh, this gradient module is uh, queued by J, then you get a finite general module over commutative ring, which has co dimension F. And this GK dimension in the commutative case is just the Q dimension. So you really have an upper bound for this Gaffron dimension, which says that in general, because uh, giving a super singular representation of pi, you, you have very little understand, understanding. So in general, it's hard to prove uh, it has, uh, it's hard to control its gap on the kilo dimension. So, which means that this category C, uh, this condition is a very, very strong, um, I mean, uh, restriction on pi. So, the natural question is that how large is this category C? Were it to be, I mean, uh, just uh, very smaller, just uh, contains the, the principal series. Um, we have a partial answer that this category contains some very interesting class of pi, those coming from the common multiple cohomology. Uh, let me uh, now recall the setting. So I take F to be a totally real field. I assume it is unramified at places above P. I also take a Cartonian algebra E with center F which I assume split about P and also split at places uh, uh, about infinity. So I say it's uh, definite, but uh, for simple, for simplicity. So I fix a place about PV, let UV uh, be a compact open subgroup of uh, uh, this one, D times, uh, times uh, uh, AF infinity V, the finite adels outside the V, uh, then I can define SDUVF, this space. Um, so first, uh, uh, if you uh, fix uh, uh, open compact subgroup of D to FB, um, uh, you can look at such functions um, This in this double coset to F. This is a, a finite dimensional space. Then you take the um, uh, inverse, uh, sorry, you, you take the inductive limit. Um, because you, you take all the open compressor group, in fact, this space carries a tier to F, um, FV advantage, sorry, tier to FV advantage. Now, <coughs> uh, sorry, I forgot, I forgot to, uh, here I forgot to introduce what is R bar. So sorry, so R bar is a, is a global representation of uh, the Galois group of the total real field F, R bar. So given R bar, you assume that say it's a continuous, uh, absolutely reducible, you can attach a maximal ideal in some uh, hacker algebra. And uh, you can look at the, uh, the, the subspace annihilated by this maximal ideal. It's also called the eigenspace uh, corresponding to uh, the R bar. So this is again, because the action of a deal to FB Commute with the action of a hacker algebra. So this is again an, an, a representation of delta FB. This is uh, even admissible smooth representation. And um, we further assume that this representation is non zero. Uh, that means that R bar is modular. Um, we will be interested in this delta uh, FB representation. Um, in fact, the reason is that this implementation is expected to uh, realize a multiple uh, Lorentz correspondence uh, to, uh, to the restriction of uh, R bar to GFB. 
so I mean to be local members. Okay. So um, the nextly uh, we will uh, uh, study this recommendation. Um, the first result is that um, understand uh, global conditions. Uh, for example, including the Taylor Wiles condition. And we also need to assume Roba is generic. So here, Roba is a local component of Arba at B. Uh, this generic uh, condition, I, I will imply this in the next slide. So, in particular, it implies the prime P must be very large. So, this is some uh, condition not, not, not so, not, not good condition. So, anyway. Um, then the conclusion is that this uh, representation pi v d r bar lies in the category C. Uh, more precisely, we prove that um, the gradient module of this, uh, the dual of this representation is actually queued by J, not just a finite power, it's exactly queued by J. So as I already remarked that for any representation in, in the category C, we have upper bound for the GK dimension by F. So in particular, um, for this uh, rotation coming from what we call homology, we have an upper bound. And actually, this was uh, um, the main motivation to prove this theorem. And so we proved this theorem um, um, before, before the Faga, uh, before last theorem. So this is proved in last year. Um, and um, and um, the definition of C was largely motivated by this theorem because we, we found that some uh, the, the rotation coming from what we call homology satisfied this condition. So this subjected uh, to uh, look at such a category. Uh, here, let me re remark that um, this theorem uh, is uh, on the, it's due to uh, our, our, our people. Uh, myself, Mara and Shen, and also due to, I mean, who won. So we we five proved the, the case for Ruba semi symbol. Uh, we treat the case Ruba semi symbol. And in the work uh, with uh, Horan Wong, we treat the case uh, non semi symbol case, which means uh, in the when Ruba is a non symbol extension of two characters. Okay, um, this uh, partially answers that. The category C uh, contains very uh, interesting rotations. Now let me explain the generosity condition. Uh, I take an example in the reducible case. So I write uh, this row bar because it's reducible. I write it as uh, this form after twist this way. Uh, you, I can assume this part is one. And I write uh, this character to be a power of uh, omega f. So here omega f. Is a fundamental character of CR of uh, level F and uh, treat, uh, times some unratified character. Uh, here Ri runs over minus one to P minus two. So here Ruba is a generic if I, I satisfy this for all I and strongly generic if satisfy that. So uh, I, I don't want to explain too much on this generic condition. So certainly if you allow P very large, you, you, you such Ruba exists. So, but for technical reason, we need to impose such uh, technical conditions. Okay. Um, I, I will, we will mention the strongly generosity uh, in the next theorem. Um, this is even stronger because uh, um, this depends on F here. So, so which means that F, uh, P must be uh, bigger than four times F, depends on F, not uh, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, even stronger, okay? So next question that you can ask, uh, now you know that because this representation pi v r bar lies in the category C, you can ask when you apply a uh, Bohe's generalized functor D, what do you get? Can you compute them uh, explicitly? Because uh, when uh, rule bar is irreducible, um, is it, you can show that, I mean, um, this rotation, in fact, is a super singular. It contains something super singular. Rotation. So it has been difficult, um, I mean, diffi difficult problem to compute um, 
the figure module, what you get. Um, so I let V of pi be the associated color rotation to this Fagama module uh, via, uh, uh, via the, the equivalence of a Fontaine. Uh, the partial answer is uh, that uh, if I assume uh, rho bar is a semi sample, and uh, I'm sorry, I should say strongly generic. <laughs> uh, so here, very generic means strong generic. Right? Um, when rho bar is very generic, then um, the Galois orientation uh, is isomorphic to uh, some copy. So here, uh, the direct sum D means some copy of uh, the tensor induction of Okay. Okay. Um, I will now next uh, uh, define what is a tensor induction. Uh, so here D, uh, if you ask what, what is the D here, uh, this is because uh, when I define here, when I define this rotation, I choose some UV. Uh, so when, when you um, change UV, the D will change. Uh, so, so this uh, this is why uh, D appears because it depends on UV. This is always some finite number of integers. Uh, so um, sometimes you, if you choose UV uh, very carefully, you, you can make D equals one, uh, the so-called minimal case. Um, so now let me uh, uh, define uh, define this uh, tensor induction. So for some group H of G uh, of uh, finite index N, uh, G, uh, you can write G as a left coset decomposition. Um, so now uh, if rho and V is a finite dimensional representation of H, uh, you can define the tensor induction. Um, unlike the usual induction, so, uh, here we take a tensor product, not the direct sum of uh, G i tensor V. Uh, this is the underlying space. Now you can uh, give uh, action of G. I uh, mean, this is a very, very simple, uh, very easy definition, uh, the normal definition. Uh, so you get a representation of G. So the dimension of a tensor induction is a, a dimension of a V uh, to the power. And uh, uh, if you look at the euro uh, induction, the dimension is n times the dimension of so here we get tensor induction. Okay. Um, so now let me uh, finally pass to the proof of, uh, of, of the measure. Um, okay. Let me recall that. Uh, so N0, you know, this is a unipotent group. And we look at the completed Ivasawa algebra. Uh, Algebra, which is isomorphic to a power zero three with f variables. So it is equipped with uh, some M N0 Arctic equation. It takes the maximum ideal. You have a natural M Arctic equation. You look at this multiplicative subset, subset uh, inside this ring, um, uh, y0, uh, uh, sorry, um, y0 times yf uh, minus one to the power N. Um, and uh, you look at uh, first uh, you uh, localize uh, at S and you take completion because when you localize you again get a filtered uh, um, red they can uh, take complete uh, future future uh, completion of the future um, you can define an action of a phi and OK cross on the F and the rule by these formulas so it, just by the by the multiplication in matrix um, in the natural way, this action by continuity extends to uh, the, this uh, completed future ring A. So now for um, if you have a pi a, a, a smooth admissible representation of a zero to k, you first look at the dual and you take the uh, tensor product. And completion, okay. The A tensor pi do the uh, completion. This is isomorphic to. Um, I mean, you first localize at pi do, then you take some uh, take completion with back to some uh, equation. Um, 
it's easy to see that this this function is exact because um, um, this A is a flat module over F and U rho, and when take completion, um, it's also knowing that this is an exact um, uh, when take completion is an exact function. Um, now uh, we can define uh, a continuous of right of psi on pi s u, or pi, in fact, pi, pi du s, pi du s. Um, so you see, uh, di pi can be uh, uh, described as some completion of this uh, localization of pi du. Uh, when you have a continuous psi, you can extend psi on this di of pi. And also, okay, cross action extends to uh, this one. In this way, you get a psi okay cross module over. Uh, to this, this is analog to the uh, psi gamma module uh, in either sense of a name. Um, so, first lemma is that uh, if pi lies in the category C, then D of pi is a finite general module over A. So, then why is that? So the rough reason is that if pi lies in C, then when you take the gradient module, the grade D of pi is a finite general module over grade A. Then um, this is a standard uh, fact that um, if you have completed uh, future module over some uh, serum, complete the future ring, if the gradient module is finite generated, then um, the module itself is a finite generated. Um, so, of course, it's key so to check that why the gradient module is finite generated. Uh, here, it uses the definition of C, it uses uh, the condition that uh, when you take gradient module of a pi duo, uh, it is skewed by some power of J. So, but, uh, but I don't have time to explain this in detail. Um, now, in general, you, we cannot prove or we don't know uh, how to prove. If the uh, pi is eta of the psi uh, okay cross okay, model, but it's, uh, it's, uh, but however, there always exists uh, a largest eta quotient, let's say denoted by di pi eta. So you quotient by is a new point part. You get a largest quotient, uh, which itself is eta psi okay cross module, and then uh, the theorem. Uh, says that um, the etal part of the pi now is an etal psi okay module, and hence it is also an etal phi okay cross module. And the functor, if you send pi to da pi eta, this is again exact. And finally, da pi eta is a finite projective a module. So the the key. Um, probably now here is that it's, it's even protective ammo. This uses uh, that, the, the, you, it has an action of OK cross. Um, OK, now um, I pass to the, uh, the final uh, part of the proof. So we need to know the relation, um, relation to a uh, voice functor. So, you have the trace map from OK to ZT. So it induces a morphism from, uh, between, between the Eva sub algebra, which is of course selected. So hence, when you pass to, um, so here, when you localize at S, uh, on the side of this F uh, double bracket T, it means that you localize at a T, okay? You send S or the YI to T. So when take completion, but this part already complete. So you get uh, a subjection from the ring A to uh, FT. Now the key property is that, um, I mean, uh, the relation to a uh, Bohe's functor D, uh, you look at, you, you take the tensor product, or, or you, rather you take the best change of DI pi uh, A dot, you best change to F of T, you exactly uh, get to the point from D of pi. So now remember that the math theorem says um, uh, D of pi, if pi lies in C, 
then d of pi is a finite dimensional by gamma module. Now you know that d of pi uh, a data is itself a finite generated over a, so it follows. Um, then you need to show why d of pi is uh, d, d is an exact function. But uh, by the last theorem, we know pi, uh, so this one is exact, and also this guy is a projective a module. So when you pass to uh, by, by, by change, you, you again get something exact function. Okay, so roughly um, this is the proof of the measure. Um, so uh, I finished the talk. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, uh, thank you for the talk. So are there any questions in the room? I have a small technical question that I, on one of your slides I saw uh, some a state of wise condition uh, appear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's here, yes, yes. Some blue. So, so what is it? Oh, it means that if you are bar when you restrict to some, uh, so it's a, it's a representation of a uh, Galois group of F. So when you restrict to uh, you adjoint f uh, some uh, piece power of uh, minus one, and uh, then uh, um, then you get a subgroup, uh, which uh, there was condition. I mean, said that when you restrict to the, the, the subgroup, it remains to uh, your loose points. So this uh, condition, I think. It's already there, starting from the first paper of uh, Telewas uh, for the proof of uh, <laughs> Fermat last year. Because it's this very hard to, to move. Uh -huh. Are there Zoom questions? No, no Zoom questions. Uh, well, I'll ask sure. you a question. So uh, you started one type of the, like, uh, representations from the cohomology. Is it the only type of co um, representation from cohomologies in Swiss study GL2 representations? Or there are other kind of um, representation from cohomologies that you would expect to exist and probably also nice in the class C? Okay, I see, I see. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, in fact, you can um, consider other global setup. For example, you can take a Schmerer curve you can define similar, uh, I mean, space, uh, pi v r bar uh, inside of the um, H1 et al cohomology yeah. of a Schmerer curve. You can also take other, uh, say, unitary group, uh, some other group set up, but it is um, expected that um, this representation, because we expect that this is something local representation. Mm -hmm. This is something local, just related to global. This is exactly that it does not depend on which global setup you, you choose. Um, but this is really very hard to prove. The no, I think no, uh, except the case gel to kill, mm -hmm. uh, there's no result on this, uh, on this part thing. So in the, in the case gel to kill, they use, uh, because we have uh, all the periodic uh, local under correspondence, so everything is uh, you can uh, explicitly. Um, so that's uh, yeah. So uh, we expect that uh, it's just uh, depends on the bar. Uh, so you can choose which one. You, you can uh, choose uh, anything you prefer. And uh, in fact, all the argument in the proof, all the argument is either in the periodic hard theory. Say we need to compute some uh, local Galois deformation. This uh, is a purely local, does not depend on any global setup. And uh, all some uh, representation theory of GL2. So again, uh, purely local ways. So essentially, uh, you can change the setup and the proof works through. Oh, so you mean in the other setup, for example, you can show that the representations are also in C and then. Yes, in other in other one, yeah, in other one in the say the Schumacher case again, see, yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
but we cannot show it is independent of the choice. We can show some common properties. Yeah. Okay. Um, all the questions? No. Okay. Well, uh, let's send the speaker again. <laughs>